Okay, so uh, here's uh, yet another resource for you. Oh, well, I, I sent you all an email last night. I think I will not be in my office of 11 on the size of that. Okay. Um, Hao Chen, who is your grader, who's sitting in the back of the room, has kindly also agreed to have more resources for, uh, resources for you. His office, uh, so this is in addition to my office hours. His uh, office is a B2 long haul, which is the same building I'm in, convenient. Uh, and he will be available Monday to Friday, 2 to 4 p.m., or by appointment. And that's, I did get your email right, didn't I? Is that correct? Well, H10 right. Right. Okay. okay. Any questions before we get rolling? All right. So, uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about orthogonal projection. So, this again, this is just kind of building on our earlier ideas. And by the way, I think it's two or seven. Anyway, it's whatever room we've been in the last couple of times. We'll have a review session Friday at the math club. So this is the last new section for uh, the exam. Uh, I, if I have to finish up on Friday, then I'll finish up on Friday. Uh, but most of Friday, I plan for us to be a review anyway. So we're going to review stuff. And then we'll have the uh, review session itself. Uh, we're out of class for the at 6 30 long haul to the second on Friday. Uh, I plan to run the exam the same way I did before. That is to say, uh, get here early, 7 50. Is that okay with everybody? And uh, we'll run it from uh, 7 50 to 8 50 and give you a great period of upload. So. All right. Um, so let's talk about this whole uh projection. So last time, So last time we did the situation here, we took a vector y and we projected on the vector u, and we called this piece of u is y. Projection of uh, projection of y upon u. Now there's no need to stop here uh, in the sense that we can go to sort of higher dimensions. So. This is just projecting y onto a line, but you can project it onto a plane, right? If this is a, a, a vector coming up out of a plane, or it's harder to picture, but coming out of a space uh, in four dimensions or whatever. And you can you can expand this concept here. Larger. And that is a higher dimension. And that's what we're kind of going with this. Uh, and the big goal uh, given a vector y and then on in uh, and Subspace uh, decompose a piece of 
S and W and it's perpendicular to the orthogonal. <clears throat> So what we so this is our big goal here. So if you have a vector y, my big goal is so given given some vector y and some subspace w, I want to break y up into two pieces. I want to be able to break it up actively into two pieces when this piece is in w. Whatever my original subspace is, and this piece is in W first. So basically, what we're doing is we're decomposing a vector into two so uh, perpendicular components, if you will. And if, again, if you had, you will probably see this in a physics class where you decompose forces into uh, perpendicular components and so forth. So this is a very important tool. And we can actually ramp this up and actually figure out ways to decompose y into a whole bunch of perpendicular pieces. And that's going to build up from here. So let me get right to it here. <laughs> I'm going to just tell you how to do it and kind of justify why it works, and then do some examples. And what you're going to see, what you're going to see in this theorem. Is what I hope is familiar piece from the kind of thing that we did last time. This projection thing just looks exactly the same as it did before, just kind of spread out of it. So, uh, this is the So I'm just going to flat tell you how to do this. So here's my setup. Uh, so suppose that I walk up to you on the street, I give you some subspace W, say of Rn, and I pick any uh, uh, vector in Rn. Any vector y and Rn can be written to be decomposed this way, where Y hat is in W. So this is the piece of W that I promised. And uh, Z hat is in W perfect. And let me remind you what W perfect is. It is the set of all vectors that are orthogonal to every vector in W. And what is more, uh, And this representation is <laughs> this is often a very useful thing to say, but uh, what I mean by that is if you could suppose, so what this theorem says, it says that if I've got a vector, I can do this. I can write it as something in B and something in B part. The uniqueness means there's only one way to do it. That's it, which is very powerful thing. And here is how you do it. Specific. Yeah. Um, you want. U2, uh, U, A is an orthogonal 
basis. Oh, now, at this point, you might get a little bit concerned and say, well, Jim, how do you know W has an orthogonal basis? Well, let's have a little church time here and have some faith because it turns out it does. And I'm going to show you those later, but for right now, you can just take it as a matter of faith. Yes, I can always find an orthogonal basis. Let me point out that you've always got an orthogonal basis for Rn just being E1, E2, E3, and all the way up to right? But this is also true for any subspace and it's got an orthogonal basis. Then, I'm going to tell you how to write Y hat. That's in w. This is y dot u one uh, <coughs> over u one dot u one. Right, this piece should look familiar. I do want to do a And you just go through all the vectors and the bases. That's what your piece looks like. Notice that just this first piece was the orthogonal projection that we were looking to just on another vector last time. This is a projection on the U1. This is a projection on U2. This is a projection on the UK. Just add them up, and that's just a projection on the W. And we sometimes say Y hat is log W. It's a projection of Y on the subspace W. <coughs> and what is Z? <laughs> well, you know what Y is. I just told you what Y hat is. So what is Z? <coughs> Should be just this. Now, let me justify if this works and then we'll get our hands dirty with some examples. Any questions so about the notation or anything? Mm -hmm. Okay. So, Okay, this is the stupid part of the proof, right? Z plus Y hat. Well, by definition, I define Z to be Y minus Y hat. And so when I add that Y hat, I get Y. So, okay, that piece works, okay? But now I've got to <coughs> show you, let me just stop the rest of the statement. What else do I say? I say that Y hat is in W. Well, of course Y hat is in W because it is a linear combination of the bases, right? W is the span. <laughs> Of U1, <coughs> U2, up to UK. So, uh, Y hat is in you know, W because it is a linear combination of U1, U2, all the way up to UK. Remember, these things right here, they're just numbers. It's a dot product divided by a dot product. Everybody okay, sir? So, this is true. This is true. Ooh. C is in W first. Now, that's the first thing that I uh, come to this polynomial. Y 
why is that in there? That's probably not clear. Anybody got any? What does it mean? What does it mean for Z to be in W part? Yes, uh, no, no. What I have here is this is an orthogonal basis for W, right? So, yes, all of these vectors here sit at right angles, they're all perpendicular to each other. But see, this may not be all of our end, there may be some other vectors that aren't in here, right? And so there might be this other piece W part. W part is everything that is orthogonal to all those vectors. Notice that none of these vectors or, or are orthogonal to all the rest of them because U1, for example, is orthogonal to all these, but it's not orthogonal to itself, right? And so I know one vector that's orthogonal to all those, the zero vector. And it is possible that W part is just a zero, right? But in general, maybe not. In fact, if K is less than N, uh, then that would probably be something other than zero. What do I have to do to convince myself that this thing is actually a W perp? What does it mean to live in W perp? It's got to be orthogonal to every vector in W, right? Am I agree with that? So we need to show that it's orthogonal to every base itself. So plane. I claim you can see it's orthogonal to every one of these basic elements of the Everybody okay with me? I, I'm claiming I'm going to justify it. Okay, well, what is C? Well, Y minus Y hat is Y minus this alpha mess here, right? Uh, well, I'm going to go ahead and get And small for the dot product. <coughs> now, this here, I don't really know what Y is, so I can't do any better than that. So I'm just going to do this. Y. I really, I don't think you can improve from here. But, I do have a formula for this, mainly it's this crap right here. So this is y dot u y dot u one or u one dot u one. Y dot u i over u i dot u i. And doing the other end, y dot uk, uk dot uk. Yes? Why did you remove the vector on the first y? Why did you do it? The first y on the far left is y. <laughs> Uh, actually, it should be this. Is this your question? Yeah, right. yeah. I, I just uh, put my hands on it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, everybody. Now, this looks like death on a hot plate. However, it's not so bad, 
Right? Anybody tell me what's my big relief here when I dot this through all these vectors? This is an orthogonal basis, right? Right. So what happens? Don't make too much out of this. This is UI dotted with number of times U1, right? What happens when I dot UI with U1? I get zero because they're orthogonal. What happens when I dot UI with U2? Zero. What happens if I dot UI with UK? Zero. Unless I equals K, one or two. And so, what's the only survivor when I do this? That's why I sort of did this. Notice when I dot UI with every other vector, I get zero. Only when I dot it with this, do I get something that's not zero. Everybody agree? So this is just, it's a bloodbath. Everybody's gone. This is UI dotted with Y minus, let's see, the number is Y dot UI over UI dot UI. And then it's UI dot UI. Are you okay with that? And everything else is gone. <coughs> it's orthogonal. Now, y'all see what happens here? Look at these two numbers. They're the same and not zero, but they cancel out. And so I get UI dot Y minus. U I dot Y, which is the big fat zero. So C is orthogonal to every single basis element. So C is orthogonal to all vectors. Because every vector in W is a linear combination of that basis. And so Z is orthogonal to every linear combination of the routes. Okay, okay, so. so we've now got that state. We know that Z is in W part. The last thing that I need to justify is I did say that it is unique. Let me make one more claim. If you don't know that symbol, let me write this out in English. Let D D in W and W. Let me ask you all a question. I want you to think about this for a moment. What happens if you have a vector V? And suppose it's in W. That's not too hard to read. But suppose it's also in W part. What does that mean about the vector? So, <laughs> you're close. Got to go lower though. It has to be the zero vector because if it lives in W. And it lives in W part, that means it must be perpendicular to itself, right? And the only vector I know that that's true of is zero vector. Let me show you that's true. So B is in W part, and in B, or I'm sorry, in W. So It can be in perpendicular to itself. Hence, B dot B is zero. And that's one of our properties of dot products that the dot product of any vector with itself is greater than or equal to zero. And it's equal to zero if and only if it's the zero vector.
another way to put this is this vector's length is zero. Is zero. So now that I've made this claim, I can finally finish the justification of this result in the following fashion. I claim that the representation is unique. Suppose that Suppose I can write y two ways, right? Uh, with z and z1 and w and y hat and y one hat and w part. Suppose I can write this two ways. What does this mean? Well, let me let me play around with this a little bit. This means that C minus C1 is equal to Y1 uh, minus Y half. Everybody agree with that? Let's just kind of rearrange this stuff. Where does C minus Z1 live? Z and Z1 live in W, so Z minus C1 lives in W, right? <coughs> Where does Y, Y1 hat minus Y hat live? It lives in the W part thing, right? So what does this mean? C minus C1 lives in W, but it's equal to this, so it's in W part as well. So C minus C1 is the zero vector. Hence, Z equals C1. And if you know the Z equals Z1, just subtract them all. Those two have to be equal as well. And so there's the uniqueness because what we have shown is if I can write y this way, and I can write it another way, then these two pieces are the same, and these two pieces. <coughs> and there you go. That's the uniqueness. Okay. Any questions thus far? Okay. Um, I'm going to kind of uh, do a problem here, add a little bit to it. Uh, example. So I want to look at a particular subspace of R4, and I want us to really kind of pick this problem apart. I'm going to do the standard three vectors. I want one, two, zero minus one, uh, two, Minus one, three, zero, and minus one, one, one. Okay.
by the way, what can you tell me about the subspace W? What's its dimension? <laughs> number of, it's the number of bases. So, does everybody agree? So, you, how many of you think three? I kind of think three. Tim kind of looks like, right? But how do you check? What do you need to know? Right? Can somebody, I, I don't know for sure it's three. Why not? <laughs> I, I mean, a priori, I don't know what the dimension of that is. So. What could be the problem? It might not be linear. I can say this much: the dimension are any of those are are any of those vectors not the zero vector? Yes, they're all not the zero vector. So I know the dimension of W is at least one, and it's no more than three. Everybody agree with that? Can somebody justify that it's it's more than one? Look at these two. Is this vector a multiple of this one? These two are definitely linearly independent, right? So it's got to be at least two. So the dimension is two or three, right? <laughs> so if one of those vectors is a linear combination of the other two, it's dimension two, right? If they're all three linearly independent, it's dimension three. Okay, you guys. Put your eyeballs on this moment and tell me is the dimension two or three? I agree. Uh, how, how did you tell me that? Well, there's the first one that's that's good intuition. And in fact, sometimes if you stack the, the zeros in the right place, it's pretty easy to tell. But I'm still not completely convinced that you might not be able to take a linear combination of this is not the case. Right? But there's actually a check. Of course, we can go through and try to set up the equations of linear independence. We can put this, we can put this in a matrix, right? We can make three columns in a matrix. And we could try to row reduce it, and we would need three linearly independent columns, right? And then we'd be happy to say two dimensions, right? Who wants to do that? I, I, I'd rather not do that. Can you, can you see something else about these vectors that help you out? I'm sorry, are they a part of I'm just guessing. <coughs> they are. They just missed the first two, and I was like, yeah. right, I'm they sure. are a bottom. Let's go through it. What's the dot product of these two? So two minus two is zero, 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 right? They're your zeros, and they help out, right? The dot product here, here is minus one. <coughs> now we're up to plus one, minus one, zero, okay? So these two dot to zero, these two dot to zero. All we got to do is check this negative two, negative three, plus three. These three are orthogonal. Now tell me, why does this settle it? If you have an orthogonal set that doesn't contain the zero vector, it's a linearly independent set. So yes. Let me make this fun observation. This is a three-dimensional subspace of R4. Span. Everybody okay with that? Now, I want us to see if I remember my vector. And I want I want you all to see this in action here. Uh, okay. Seven, 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 nine. So my instructions so far are into And this is like what our theorem said. So let's decompose this vector. 
can do something in W or something in W part. And then I want to use this. Expand our basis of W to an orthogonal basis. Okay, so let's do the step by step. Um, so first, I want to use, um, I'm sorry, well, I had. I want to just use this uh, formula here, which should be y dot u1 over u1 dot u1. Y dot U two over U two dot U three and Y dot U three over U three dot U three. And here my players are. You can you can and you can okay, and you know what while I'm over here bothering with it, let me write this down. Let me record this posterity. I'm going to need this in my formula, so I might as well figure it out while I'm over here. What is uh, u1 dotted with u1? Agreed. u2 dotted with itself? Agreed. And u3 dotted with itself? So let's see what this is. Let's see, I need y dotted with u1. And y in this case is my new vector, 7, 7, 7, 9. Okay. What happens to my dot um, y with u1? So 12. And I don't know what the four is six. It's two and one. Um, let's say this be something over fourteen. Okay, so we'll see. Uh, y dotted with u two is twelve. What's it twelve? Uh, yeah. <laughs> it should be. Uh, 14 minus 7 is 7 and 21 is 28. Yep. And now I've got a dot file with uh, the class B3. It looks like it's 16. So this comes to 2U1 plus 2U2 plus 4. Uh, let's see if I can figure out what that is. Let me put all three of my coefficients here. Two, two, four. So two of these, two of these, four of these. And for the first quarter, it should be two and four is six uh, minus four is two.
second coordinate is four minus two is two plus four is six. The third coordinate is definitely zero, which would be six and four to the n. And the final one is going to be negative two, zero, four is two. And this is my illustrious Y hat. Okay. They're called Y hat, and of course, it is a linear combination E1, E2, and E3, so it's N, W. And my Z, therefore, should be just. Uh, Y minus Y hat. Uh, let's see, my Y was seven, seven, nine minus my Y hat turned out to be two, six, and two. And let's see what this comes to be. That's going to be five, one, Negative three set. Uh, notice that this vector and this vector better be perpendicular, otherwise, I screwed it up. And we'll see what happens. The dot product is 10 and 6, which is 16, minus uh, 30, which is minus 14, or 14 is. And in fact, just like in the proof, this thing should be perpendicular to everything in W. So it's perpendicular to U1, U2, and U3. So here's my Z hat. Here's my Y hat. And there we go. Question. How about the last bit? The last bit says use what we got here. To what expand our basis of W to an orthogonal basis. Uh, I don't know why I'm going to say it. I think it out. But it works at the end. Use this to expand our basis of W to an orthogonal basis of W for R4. Any uh, questions about that? Yeah, I'm going to put Yes. You just take y hat, add it to the, when I add it, but like, put it in. Oh, you're close. Here's the problem with throwing in y hat. It's already in W because it's a linear combination of the basis of W. But you're close. <laughs> what do you want to throw in? One of our big theorems for earlier is. <clears throat> The basis that we have for W is one, two, uh, zero minus one. Two minus one, three, zero. And minus one, 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 one. This is linearly independent. And in fact, it's stronger than that, it's an orthogonal set. So it can be expanded to a basis for our equation. This was an old theorem that we had when we talked about linear independent, right? If you have any linearly independent set, you can sprinkle some fertilizer on it and grow it to a, uh, you can throw it more linearly independent until you get a basis of the entire, in this case, R4. Do I agree with that? What can I throw in to make the new basis element and also an orthogonal basis? Well, all you need is an orthogonal set, right? And you need uh, to be a basis of R4, you need an orthogonal set of how many? 
We need four vectors. So we only need one more. What should we throw in? How about Z? That's exactly right. If you throw in whatever it was, five, one, minus six, seven. This factor is in W part, so it's orthogonal to everything in W. So it's orthogonal this, this, this. And these are already orthogonal. So this right here is a orthogonal basis to R4, right? And it's an exotic one. My favorite orthogonal basis for R4 is one and all zeros, zero, one, zero, 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 zero one, and zero, 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 one. That's my favorite one. But this one works as well. By the way, is this an orthonormal basis? No what, right? Uh, but that's an easy fix, right? What do you do to turn this into a normal orthonormal basis? Go in and figure out how long all these vectors are and divide by the length. This vector, the dot product of itself is six, so you divide this by radical six. The dot product of itself is 14, so divide by radical 14. Uh, the dot product of itself is four, so just divide this by two. And this is bigger. Uh, the dot product of itself is 25, 49, plus uh, 74. Uh, so you have to divide by radical 84. But that's good. Okay, any questions? Let me make a note. Uh, or I give you kind of the end game on this. Note and also a, a follow up mark to that. If y is already in w, so suppose you start with a vector y and it's already in the subspace w, then y hat, which is projection on the w of y, what do you suppose happens if it's already in there? It will just be y itself because it's already in there. So when you try to project it into the space, you're just going to return the value okay. of y. And so, please, theorem. This is almost called. This is often called the best approximation. Let's suppose that. Let w be a subspace of R n. Uh, and why be any vector in R n, any vector at all, whether it's in W or not, uh, and why be the projection W y. So this is the same thing that we've been working on all day. Then why hat? Is the closest vector to y that is in there. <laughs> and notice this makes sense when you tie it in here. So, in fact, so let me make this precise. So the length of y minus y hat is strictly less than the length of b minus, we'll say w minus y hat for all w uh, in w different than y. Okay, and so you can actually sort of see this, I guess. 
Let's just take a simple example that we talked about last time. Here, my subspace is very simple. It's just this line that is the span of vector u. And what this is saying is this vector right here is y hat. Notice y hat is in the span of it's a multiple of u. And notice that y hat is the vector that is closest to y. That is, their tips are close as possible. No other vector is closer, right? Because this vector right here is much farther than this, and even farther than this, <coughs> longer than this. So really, then that, what you're actually doing when you find this y hat is you're finding the closest vector in the subplace, in this case, spanned by u uh, to the original vector y. Okay, any questions? I'm going to finish up next time by uh, just making a remark about what happens if it's orthonormal. You might think what happens when the basis is orthonormal, which is a little bit better than orthogonal. It simplifies the it simplifies the formula, but not significantly really. Uh, so I'll finish up that in like five minutes, and then we'll get on to a review next time. I will post your quiz. And, you know, uh, in the secondary. So any questions? All right, I will see you all on Friday.